All right, Christos. So tell me a little bit about yourself and who you are. Are you doing it now? You're actually filming now? No, I'm filming the whole thing. I'm off on a road trip around the UK. I want to go visit lots of people. I want to go learn from them. Think of Tim Ferriss tools, the Titans. I want to go meet some Titans and I want to stand on the shoulders of giants. And today, this is the start of what is effectively a 1000 mile road trip around the UK. And I've got six days to do it. Let's go. Whoa. Hundred and fifty miles done. Southampton to Norwich. I'm at the B and B. Got breakfast like that, and uh, excited because I'm going to go meet someone. So let's get going. Today I am hashtag excited because you know what? I get to bring you five top tips about what you need to do to sell on Amazon for online arbitrage. But you know what? This isn't going to be about me telling you what it is. It's going to be about this guy. <laughs> That guy there, that is Christos Felos, and we right now are in Norwich. Norwich, and I used to live here five years, and it's great to be back, and also to meet this guy. He is a big YouTuber. I'll drop a link up there just so you can see him, but oh my God, this is exciting because he has done so much, and I've watched his journey for a long time, and it's great. So if you get a chance, watch his stuff. He's doing so much, it's really cool. But today we want to talk about the top five tips to sell on Amazon for online arbitrage. Let's get into it. First question is what I want to ask Christos is, can you just tell me a little bit about yourself and who you are? So Christos, over to you. <laughs> I love this camera, by the way, it's <laughs> awesome. Um, hey guys, if you haven't seen me before, my name is Christos Fellas. I obviously have a YouTube channel, which Tom just said about. It talks about all the different ways to sell on Amazon and actually make some extra money in your spare time as well, doing other online business models. But um, basically from an Amazon point of view, I've been selling on Amazon properly for just over two years, um, but I was selling on Amazon for a little bit before there. So in total, it's been about three years that I've been selling on Amazon, but I've built my YouTube around it, documented my journey all the way up until now, and I will continue to do so in the future. But that's where I am with my Amazon uh, journey and my YouTube journey, and that's just a little bit about myself. And I live in Norwich, <laughs> and it's amazing. <laughs> Beautiful place. Um, admittedly, right You're now, we're not in the best <laughs> place. <laughs> literally filming it in one of the roughest car parks in Norwich. <laughs> yeah, like, Christos, why did you bring us to, why did you bring me to, like, a rough car park in the centre of Norwich? This is a beautiful place. Like, well, we, I was actually going to be taking you to uh, an apartment that I own, which I've just rented out, which is generating me another online income stream. But that's what I'm all about. I'm all about generating different online income streams. Amazon's one of them. Hey, you know what, like, <laughs> It's great, you know, he mentioned it here. He is he has got this property income, he's got other things. Yes, we talk about Amazon, yes, we're talking about selling on Amazon, but you know, Christoph talks about it all the time. It is about having other options, multiple streams of income. And you know what? Christoph is doing some really great content right now on multiple streams of income. So if you're interested, do check out his channel. Honestly, I cannot recommend it enough. Okay, so look, let's get going. So Christos, question for you, man, is you know, five top tips for Am new Amazon sellers on Amazon. What would you recommend on your journey so far? Yeah, so number one, um, my biggest tip for anyone that's starting online arbitrage, normally I would say you've done a bit of retail arbitrage before, you've at least sold something on Amazon before you jump straight into online arbitrage. That is to number one, you've got to be using cashback websites. It's your best friend when doing online arbitrage. I know so many sellers myself that almost make a full-time income just from their cashback and it's free money. So use websites like Top Cashback, Complete Savings, Quidco, all the ones you can get your hands on. Cashback, number one tip for anybody starting online arbitrage. Okay, so tip number two has got to be all about patience. So online arbitrage is a competitive model. Because it's so easy to get into and so easy to actually make money with, there is going to be naturally a lot of people 
selling on online arbitrage. So um, with me, I used to think that I needed to sell my products within the first week. Whereas now I actually have more of a three month strategy. So if I do see one of my products go down in price, I'm not panicking trying to sell that product straight away. I'm not gonna be penny pinching. I'm not gonna be matching some prices in some cases. I just have a long-term approach. So be really patient when you're starting your online arbitrage business. Don't panic if your products lose money at the start. They will come up if you've done the right research and the right source of analysis. Tip number three is to use Honey. If you didn't know what Honey is, basically Honey is a free Google Chrome add-on. That's right, it's free, where it'll basically go to any of the shops that you are shopping at. When you get to the add to cart screen, what will happen is Honey will search the entire internet for any discount codes for that website and automatically apply it to your order. Now, one thing that I definitely didn't do when I was starting my online arbitrage business was use Honey, and now that I do use Honey, I would probably say I've cost me, it has cost me thousands and thousands of pounds worth of discounts throughout the year that I didn't use it. So make sure you download it. It is completely free. I'm sure Thomas will leave a link to Honey in the description below. Okay, I just want to jump in there quickly. So quick question to any of you users. Are you using Honey? Because my God, same as Christos, I was not using it for a long time. And when I found it out, I was like, my God, the savings are immense. So drop it down below in the comments. Let me know if you're using Honey Chrome extension, or if you're not, I'm really interested to see how many of us already know about it. So drop it in the comments down below. Okay, so tip number four, and this one is just as important as the cashback one, and that is to start building a replenishable list as soon as you possibly can. Now, the reason I say this is when you are doing retail arbitrage or maybe some thrifting, you're only typically buying one of each item, then you'll probably never buy that item again unless it comes on clearance again, whereas replenishables, is basically the backbone of my online arbitrage business. These are the items that you can buy every single time. They might not necessarily make you the most profit, but they're going to be the ones that provide you profit every single month. And the more you build that list up, as time goes on, the more guaranteed profit, in some sense, you are going to be making every single month. All right, so last but not least, and top tip number five, and I see this mistake so much with new sellers, and as that is, they just jump straight towards the toys and games section. Now, as an Amazon seller, when you first start out, it is natural for all of us to go and sell toys and games because it's the one we're normally most familiar with. But there is some disadvantages that come with this, and that is the competitiveness. You will find so many penny pinches in the toys and games section at Q4, Christmas time, it's absolutely great. You know, everyone should be selling toys and games, but just throughout the year, make sure you diversify your categories. Look at the grocery section, look at health and beauty, look at even used books if you have the time to go out to charity shops. I know that isn't typically online arbitrage, but diversify your categories as much as possible. I hear so many people that say, I'm giving up Amazon because I went to Smith's Toys or went on to Smith's Toys, I went on to Tesco's or something like that. They bought a load of toys and games and the prices crashed. And that is because everyone is buying toys and games on Tesco. So look for those categories that not everyone is buying and diversify and um, you will see much more consistent sales. I just want to say thanks to uh, Tom for coming down to see me. Uh, I don't think anybody's driven all that way just to come and see someone uh, before. So I feel very, very privileged. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys found some of them tips useful. Obviously, check out my YouTube channel if you haven't already. And um, yeah, just once again, thanks to Tom for uh, for letting me come on his channel, I really appreciate it. So obviously just finished with, or Heatherset, Norwich, that's where I was, and just finished with Christos actually. Really good chance to meet him. I've spoken to him for a couple of times, and you know what, that guy's helped me massively with my YouTube channel. Fast Track FBA YouTube is a big result. You know, if you're thinking about the quality, what we're putting out is a result of the work, the support that he's given me, you know, over the months, that's been really good, so big up to him. Now, interesting enough, we kind of talked about three things which really resonated with me over the course of that, what do you call it, like that, that meeting, it wasn't a meeting, it was like that meetup, it was just cool. So the three things that really talked, you know, highlighted with me were multiple streams of income, you know, he is talking about properties, he's selling his, or he's renting his house, which is great. And then also as well, looking at um, you know, like YouTube as another stream of income. And hey, I'm not saying you've all got to become YouTubers, but the idea is just building up other streams of income. Because hey, 
Amazon can say goodbye at any time, super important. Number two was the fact that getting into wholesale, you know, looking at you know suppliers, building relationships, you know, and I was like, definitely I need to do a lot more of that. He talked about that and talked about some of the tricks that he was using and he's done some good videos on it. And then finally, one thing which I asked him was like, the question was, are you not worried about people stealing your products, etc., etc.? You know, it's quite easy to find out what other people are selling. You can just go on their profile. And interesting enough, he came back and was like, you know what, Tom, this is just part of life. You know, it's going to happen. And the thing you've got to think about is you've got to you get adapt. And, you know, if you think you can just kind of go to like, I don't know, Tesco and buy the latest Barbie and then that's it. You know, and then no one's going to copy you. Like, it's not going to happen. You know, you need to think differently. And he's like, that's why you need to get to wholesale, build those relationships, get discounts, get suppliers that no one else can find. But not only that, if they can find them, doesn't mean they're going to get the same prices. So, you know, it's about making it an uneven playing field for you. So, top tips there. But now I am off to meet someone else who I'm going to tell you about in a minute. No, I'm not. I'll tell you when I get there. So, let's go.